Hey everybody, this is Brandon from Sparksmith, and today I was going to talk about hyperflash. Hyperflash happens when you replace a standard incandescent or halogen bulb with an LED. So like in this Nissan Frontier, this is the standard halogen bulb, and then on the driver's side we popped in a profile performance uh, 7443 amber bulb. And looking at just the parking lights, you can see there's a pretty big difference in brightness, and the turn signals uh, also follow that pattern. The turn signal is much, much brighter on the LED. And that's typically why people put these LED bulbs in. But what happens is the vehicle will think that the turn signal bulb is no longer working because the LEDs, despite being brighter, draw so much less current. And what happens is you get something called hyperflash. So for instance, if you look at the passenger side, See, it has a normal rate of flash, but when we switch to the, high, the driver's side, that high-speed flashing was designed by the manufacturer to tell the driver that there's a turn signal bulb out. So if you're driving along and you use your turn signal uh, and you, you hear it doing a fast-paced flash like that, that means that you've probably got a bulb out or some other problem with your turn signals. In this case, we obviously know what the problem is. We stuck in this LED bulb. Now to fix that, all you have to do is put a resistor in line with the power circuit for the turn signal on every corner that you use an LED bulb. Okay, so to remedy the issue of a hyperflash when you've used LED bulbs, uh, three common options are you can get these cheap little wire wound resistors. They usually come in either gold or like this one's obviously green. All the same thing. It's just a big winding of wire inside a metal housing and it acts like a uh, it acts like a halogen bulb in that it produces extra resistance. Uh, another possible option are the Morimoto load resistors. These are 40 watt, 7.5 ohm resistors. Um, all of these will get warm to the touch. And the longer they're left on, the hotter they'll get. Uh, not really hot enough to like burn your skin, but you want to make sure you mount them to a metal surface instead of plastic. Um, lastly, there's the Xenon Depot resistors. Um, they are a carbon film resistor. They have they function in the same way. The internals of it are a little bit different construction, so they don't get quite as hot, and that's the appeal of these. Uh, the Xenon Depot ones retail for around $25 a pair. The Morimoto's are $15 a pair. And then these guys you can usually pick up for like five bucks a piece or four bucks a piece or something. Um, in any case, whichever one you use, you basically have to tie in across the power and ground for the turn signal to make it go from that. So we're going to pull this bulb out just so you can kind of see what's happening. This one luckily is pretty easy to get to. You can see there are three wires here. And all you really have to do is figure out which one of these is the power for the turn signal and which one is the ground. In this case it should be pretty simple. The black is almost always the ground. Unless you're dealing with something like a BMW, uh, they like to use brown for grounds. I've got a power probe here. I like to use, but any multimeter will work. So I'm going to, let's find out. So the green light means that we've got a ground on the black wire. And you can see it's switching back and forth, so we know that that green wire is our power. We can confirm it by putting it on the red wire, that's the parking light. So we know we need to install one of those resistors between this black wire and this green wire. So we're going to strip this back a little bit and create a plug for it and show you how that's done. Okay, so all, we got the uh, plastic stripped back from these. We need to cut the black wire and the green wire. And what I've got is a little pigtail here that we're going to splice into both of those and then we can plug in the resistor to this guy. I like to use these but connectors because they have an adhesive lined heat shrink around them so when you crimp them you apply heat with like a lighter or a heat gun or something like that and we'll show you that in a second it'll actually shrink up and the adhesive 
will soften up and seal it so that it's a watertight connection. Um, we see people use the little T-taps um, and the 3M quick connects and stuff like that all the time. And I just, every time I see them, they always have problems. They eventually get corroded or they come loose or they get a weak connection or something and they just always cause problems. So I always recommend staying away from those and please, for the love of God, don't use wire nuts because those are made for home wiring and not vehicles that have lots of movement and changes in temperature and things like that. It just won't work. So we twist those two wires together. We stick this on there. Crank that. We'll stick in the other end of the wire. Just like so. Always give it a little tug afterwards to make sure you got it in there solid. And then we'll do the same thing on the black. Once you get them crimped and you give them the tug test and everything's safe and secure, just take your lighter. Like I said, you can use a lighter or a heat gun, anything that gets these nice and warm. A heat gun is ideal to use, but we'll make do. sealed up. So now you've got a waterproof connection that will last more than the month or so that those little teeth have to grow. That kind of connection you can just take. We're going to use this film resistor from Xenon Depot. Plug that guy in. And the nice thing about these resistors is they're not polarity sensitive, so they don't care which one of these is positive and negative as long as they're both connected. We can go turn the turn signal on and it should have that hyper flash resolved. So even without the bulb installed, the truck thinks it's working just fine. So now you can put whatever kind of bulb you want in there. You can use it to activate like if you had some custom headlights with halos or something like that, or strips or whatever, and they have that switchback function, you can use your turn signal wire to power those. As long as you've got that resistor in place, the vehicle's not going to care what's there. Everybody, thanks for watching. If you want to check out some more of our videos, be sure to like and subscribe. And check us out on social media to keep up with all the other shenanigans around the shop.